Hi, I'm Scott Willison, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, it is now July. Uh, we're about to have a hopefully a good salmon season upon us. And in Puget Sound for coho and Chinook salmon, uh, I think there's no better fly than a, than a big meaty herring pattern. So I'm going to share with you today kind of a newer pattern I've been playing around with called the tongue-in-cheek herring. Um, it's uh, got all the elements of a, of a great large profile saltwater bait fish fly. It's uh, relatively light and easy to cast, very translucent, and it's proven to be a winner with the fish so far. So I'm going to start out in my vise. I have a size 1 aught Gamagatsu SC15. And on that, I've already debarbed the hook, and I have put a 3 16 inch silver tungsten bead. This is going to give the fly some weight in the head. Um, the thread I'm using today is going to be the Uni Mono thread. I use this for most of my saltwater patterns. Um, it, it really adds to the translucency of the fly. So I'm going to start the thread to the rear of the bead. And we're going to put in a tail. I've got here, it's a uh, super hair. Uh, this, is the, this is the polar bear color. Kind of an off-white. And I'll pull out a good, good amount of this. These stiffer tails can kind of help to keep your fly from fouling too badly. Lash that in behind the bead. The trick is you don't want to crowd the bead up too close to the eye of the hook because you're going to have to put some eyes on there and you need to leave enough space for those. And then we'll kind of trim this tail up. Always when you're trimming your bait fish flies, trim everything kind of at an, at an angle, uneven cuts. That will give you somewhat of a taper. A lot of these synthetics, like super hair, don't have tapered points like bucktail or polar bear hair. So you got to kind of work some magic with the scissors to get the look you want. Now I'm going to add in some pearlescent crystal flash. And I'll pull out maybe eight, uh, four or five strands of this longer than I need and I'm gonna tie those in in the center and then pull those back over the tail. And then we're gonna top that with some glow in the dark crystal flat or glow in the dark flashaboo. I mean, especially if you're fishing a little deeper water for Chinook on the fly, this glow in the dark flashaboo really adds a nice touch and makes this fly pretty visible from a distance. I didn't quite cut that long enough to double over, so I'm just going to tie that in as is. We'll kind of trim up those fibers. and Really, I find just sort of cutting willy-nilly, making sure you're not making everything one uniform length will give you a nice tapered look at the end. And for our short little body here, I am going to use holographic silver diamond braid. I'll tie that in on top of everything. Wind it on up. Trim that fairly short. Do a couple half hitches. This mono thread 
tends to like to slip out sometimes, so I'm really going to kind of overdo it on the, the whip finishing and whatnot. Then we're going to finish that off, trim our thread. We'll push that bead back over everything. And then we'll restart our thread in front of the bead. This thing in the water is going to behave like a like a clouser minnow, being kind of nose heavy. It's going to swim really erratically. And I used to tie a similar pattern using the the fish gull heads, but sometimes those will corrode after a while in the salt water, and this thing will last significantly longer. So I'm going to build up some thread around the bead, and then I'm going to take more of my my polar bear super hair here. And I'm going to create kind of a, a beard to the fly. And this is going to be much shorter. And really the stiffer material around the, the hook, it give, gives a nice sort of bait fish belly look and adds to the translucency. But more than anything, it's going to prevent the wing from fouling around the, the hook point, which is infuriating when you're casting from the beach for coho or uh, fishing out of a boat. They don't seem to like it when the wing is all wrapped around the hook. We'll cut another length and we're going to add some to the sides here too. Tying that about around roughly three quarters of the, the hook there. And then we'll kind of trim that up. And make sure that's in. You could trim this all up at the end if you wanted to. I kind of like to do it a little bit as I go. Helps to keep me honest in my proportions. All right. Next I'm going to add a layer of uh, Farrar Flash Blend. Uh, this is the bleeding gray color. It's got some gray and red. Kind of a little, little bit of UV material in there as well. And I'll take out just a big length of that. And I'm going to tie that in in the middle. And we'll just fold that back for our wing. And then I'm going to add, I've got some olive crystal flash. We'll do about the same as we did with the pearlescent. You're going to pull out four or five strands. Tie them in in the middle and then just pull that back over the top of everything. That way the material doesn't doesn't pull out. I'm going to do another color here of uh, Ferrar Blend. This is one of my favorites. This is the uh, bleeding mackerel color. It's got some greens and blues and reds and a little bit of black. I'm pull out a fairly thin amount. The great thing about this stuff is you don't have to use a lot of it to get a pretty substantial profile. It's got kind of a crimp to it, so a little goes a long way. Also sheds water, so this fly will cast reasonably well. And I'm tying that in just like I did the other materials. Then, 
and my favorite addition to most of my herring flies. This is angel hair in electric purple. I'll pull out a good chunk of that, kind of straighten it out. And I'm going to lay, lay that in the center and fold it back just like everything else. Got a tiny little bit of herring back for our blend here. We'll go pretty sparing on that. back and then lastly to top it off I'm going to use a little bit of this Midnight Blitz for our blend which is black with a little bit of blue flash in it and I really am only going to maybe grab four or five strands of this if I can this just gives you kind of a dark dorsal surface on the on the herring that back and then I'm going to kind of take take all this and start chopping with my scissors and again really trying to give it a nice natural taper Last thing I'm going to add before I tie this off is just some lateral scale. And I'm going to cut two long strands of this. Just like everything else, I'll tie these in in the middle. This stuff is kind of opalescent and really gives off a, a, a nice flash that's visible from quite a distance. I'll tie Tie one strand in the middle on either side. And then fold that on back. find the mono threads kind of slippery sometimes so you can't really overdo it when it comes to getting a few good whip finishes in there all right and then finally no good bait fish pattern is complete without a set of eyes i've got some 3 16 inch uh, super pearl 3d eyes and I'm going to stick one on each side of the fly here. Make sure I get those positioned where I want them. And then I'm going to finish off the fly with some UV resin. I'm um, going to start with a loon thick. And really this will just kind of fill the gap in between the eyes here. I happen to have the, the brush applicator on today, but the, the little 
little squirt cap that comes with this stuff is really ideal for this application. And I'm just putting in a, a little dab to kind of build up a head and fill the gap between the eyes there. And then we'll cure that up with our light here. Then I've got some thin UV fly finish. And I'm going to take that and just go around everything. So I'll go around the eyes completely. I get good good coverage there. Got a little hair that got stuck in it. And then really having a rotary vise helps with this stuff because it'll self-level pretty pretty easily if you start turning. We'll cure that up. The other thing this bead does besides give it uh, some weight in the front so it swims erratically, it tends to splay out all the materials tied in front of it. So this fly in the water really almost has kind of a hollow look to it. Um, it maintains a nice profile, uh, swims really well in the water, and boy does this ever catch fish. So there you have it, the tongue-in-cheek herring. Thanks for watching.